Hello everyone, it's Linda and Debbie. Hi. <laughs> from Linda Z's in Arlington Heights, Illinois, ready for your Thursday morning coffee. One of these times I'm going to have a coffee cup. Oh. Could, could you maybe get that You already that had me? yours this morning? I need mine right now, it would be <laughs> yeah. good. Now, right some of you may be joining us later mm -hmm. on, and we are so excited about this. <laughs> we are. That's why Mom wanted this extra cheerleader here to talk <laughs> about Melinda Stevenson, who's going to be coming uh, in October here. And we are so excited because she's um, not only is she, is she coming to our store for the first time, uh, we are going to be able to do six projects, six embroidery <laughs> extravaganza <laughs> projects over a two-day period. October 22nd and 23rd, Friday and Saturday, all day, both days, <laughs> lots of fun. Right, Mom? Well, what, what I really want to tell you about is that um, what has been happening, and many of you know we started these Thursday morning coffees during COVID, and we had to shut down or we couldn't do our events and whatnot. Well, we're back in full swing to events. Yeah. We're just thrilled, and they've been great um, we've had everybody's healthy. We are we have a big event center, so and those of you that are you know across the country fly in for it. We'd love to have you. Yeah, we have a come hotel. On, come on in, <laughs> right down the street. <laughs> and, so, but we have limited amount of space available because we like to yeah. keep it really uh, small, not too big. But we did have Jerry Granada from California come in, and that was a big event. We just loved it, Jerry. It was phenomenal. I know you watch these. Um, Floriani we, also we had. had yeah. Floriani. Oh, and we're having another Floriani, I believe, in December. We had um, the OESD. We've been doing some Anita, Anita Good. I mean, really wonderful. And this reminds me a lot of the Anita Good and the uh, Floriani events in the OESD. Um, Melinda is an actual, she's a, I love this, an awesome, she's not only a wonderful sewer and educator, she has a PhD, so she's a doctor of, uh, I guess, English, English. yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, teaches a uh, in Florida, one of the colleges, and she is a novelist. A, and it's romance novels. Have you? List? No, I haven't seen. You have I haven't. <laughs> no, but I'm I'm very interested in meeting Melinda, and uh, I can't wait to see what she's written. Yeah. Well, there's um, six projects. It looks like five or six projects that she's uh, doing here in the two days. So we two days hands-on sewing. Those of you that are not embroiderers that want to t get a little taste of what we do in embroidery, this is just a great way for you to come and try it. The other thing that I think is so fabulous about this, because she is an educator, Melinda is making the kits for you. They are over a hundred dollars, yeah. and, and seriously, and that's, that's how why we have class. to limit the amount of people actually in the class because but, she's making the kits. Yeah, but and only a certain amount. Look at the cost of the class. The kit is a hundred dollars. It's uh, included in the class. How much is the class? Well, for the it's normally early 149, bird? but yep. it's an early bird at 109. So you're getting uh, you're paying nine dollars for two days. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I, I just so many of you out there have told me that you can't wait to get back to working with your hands, trying some of these projects, doing some of these things. So. This is what we're doing, and that's why I felt before I show you, I'm going to do some fun little things today. But before I get into it, I really wanted right Debbie here, right? to come. Oh, yes. Yeah. Ooh, fun. <laughs> to show I'll get you. out of your way then. But yeah, I wanted to, to be here to promote Melinda Stevenson, who is a new educator. We want her to, to give her um, all of the uh, welcome at Linda Z's that you guys all know how to do so well. Yeah. So come we, on. And we have not have been able to have these educators in our store for well, two years, and so to be able to bring them all back, uh, we're just excited. And I know Debbie, you worked really hard to get to her. get her to come. Yeah, she was... will be back again next spring, but what? it will be for a whole nother <laughs> subject. Um, uh, but uh, surging actually. And now, next, they, next do they spring. have to bring a machine if they have one of our big machines? They can bring it. Maybe they no. will bring their machine or if we'll they have. We will provide it. We yeah. will provide it if they do not yeah. have one of the top of the okay. line. Yeah. All mm -hmm. right. Yep. So I, we encourage you to really give this serious thought. It is a great way to get back. I, I'm really telling you, this is what you want to do. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right. so let's get started. Debbie, thank okay. you for joining right. us, and then we'll go back and thank you. show you, you some of my See new you things. all later. So today, after that great little presentation about Melinda, I am going to show you a real simple little thing that you can do with this beautiful Bernina 890 serger. Now, how many of you out there have a cover hem serger, or even maybe just a 
a regular surgeon that will do a cover hem. That's what this Bernina will do. Um, I have this one. I have a Baby Lock Triumph at home that I love to. Um, however, Bernina has done something that I don't know what the engineering is in it. Quite frankly, I don't really care as long as I get these great, wonderful um, seams that I'm getting. And for those of you that like to make clothing or do home deck, this um, cover hem stitch, which is two rows of straight stitching. That's primarily what a cover hem is. It could be three uh, rows of straight stitching too. And then on the back side, and I'm gonna show you this up close in a moment, you will see that this has got kind of like a zigzag, a very, very stretchy seam on the back. Um, I guess I'll get Nick over here to show it so you can see it. Now see how they can stretch this real nicely. I wish you could feel this fabric. It is spectacular. It is a um, tie-dye, which I wasn't too crazy about it because I come from that uh, era when tie-dye was real big and now it's back again. But it is just so soft and so beautiful. We never had knits like that at that time. But you see the, um, the two rows of straight stitching and see when I pull it, it doesn't break. And then on the back, again, the, the zigzag stitch. So I know that many of you have cover hems already, or maybe you don't, and you're thinking that you might like it. Um, in this particular one, we teach some pajama classes. I believe we're gonna do some of that in our sew club, just to give you technique for how to sew these hems on knits. Um, on the bottom of my shirt here, I do have a cover hem, it's a small one. Um, on the machine here, if you look at this 890, you can see that the two needles are quite far apart. They are on the right and the left, and then the needle, they could have one in the center, but I don't need it for this. This hem is really, um, it's not gonna get a lot of wear for the hem. So on the um, cover hem, and this is the most popular one, that's the, called the wide cover hem that most people do. But the reason I wanna show it to you, and I have some tools that are gonna be really important when you're using this. This I gotta show you first, because I think it's the most fun. Say you drop one of your tools. Has that ever happened to anybody? And it's over here and oh, you can't reach it. Watch what's gonna happen here. <laughs> I just love this. So, and now I've picked it up and I can use it. Or the worst part, and I used to have my little kids go down there on penny a pin, and you drop your pins and you can go ahead and you know pick it up and boom, it, you've got it immediately. Uh, this, as I get a little more mature in age, I find that this little um, magnetic pull is one of the coolest thing you can find. And I'm gonna give you my little lecture about supply chain. I think everybody knows about it right now, but I can't stress it enough. And I hope if you're watching this five years from now, that thing is told and you're gonna say, what's the, what's the supply chain problem? We have a huge supply chain of getting product right now. We knew that some of this was happening. So some of our product we were able to get, we gobble up anything we could. I think we have like um, maybe 30 of these at the most, um, grab them. You, this is one of the coolest things you can have. I have it at every one of my sewing machines and it just folds up. It's got a little pin clip you can put it on. You can bring it out pick up your item and you've got it. Now, that's my my wonderful, fun little tip for the day. I'm also, when I do these hems, I use this little, um, I'm sure most of you have one of these little magnetic, um, and not magnetic, a little, um, this is actually a metal ruler. We do make this, um, here, I guess it's this little sewing gauge one. I think everybody should have that in. I don't know how you could sew without having one of those. I know we do have, um, I believe a Nancy uh, Notions or some, some little, uh, I think, Dritz or whatever. We've got some in the plastic green ones. I prefer these, they're just, you know, something I've grown up with and it's just easy to use. But when I'm folding my hem up, say I'm gonna fold this up, I can measure that with my little blue, I put the marker there, and then I use these little glass head pins. And does anybody know why I would use glass head pins to pin this? This is already done, but say it wasn't and I was pinning it all the way around. You're right, because I take it over to my Laura Star or my iron, and I press that and I never have to worry about the, number one, the glass head pins uh, breaking, 
But actually for me, number one is the fact that it would leave an impression. If I have those re real big ball pins, which are great for other things, but when I put those on there, you're gonna find you've got an impression left in your fabric and you don't want that. So these little glass head pins are just absolutely great and they go in and they pull out real easy. The um, other, and of course, then you're measuring. Some people like this, and I will tell you, I probably have three of these. This is called the um, hot ruler. And you can see right on the picture of the hot ruler, there is a um, place for you to go and put this right inside. I'm not taking it out of the package, but you can take it right inside and put this right over the hot ruler and then press right on top of it. And it leaves a wonderful firm. It's got all the markings along it. What I do with these is I cut them into pieces because if I'm going around a hem, I want to be, this is too hard to get around a circular. So I cut it for me, maybe three or four inches. And then I can just keep moving it with my iron and pressing it along. This is just a marvelous little tool. Okay, that's the most important, actually the most important one is the one you can't get. And I hesitated whether I was gonna show it to you today. I use this every single time I'm working with knits and do a cover hem. It's my most important thing along with your fray check. And because these are at least 60 days out to get, um, we are totally sold out of them. Um, it's what we're in, we're right now we're in October. So um, maybe by Christmas, I don't know if we will have them or not. But you, when you get your hands on one of these, you want to grab it. They are just phenomenal. We do have people putting them on back order. So you can, we'll have them on their website, but it will say that they are, Nick, can they actually order it if we can't get them yet? Yes, no, hope. <laughs> we could do it. So um, that way you know you'll be first in line to get it. So we will put these on uh, because they are going to be in such limited supply. I just talked to the manufacturer himself. Feather is the um, developer of this. It's, it's called a hooky. It's a serger seam hook and it's just marvelous little tool. It's like a mouse trap. Why didn't you invent it? Well, she did. And uh, John and, and uh, Feather are just delightful people. They're an American company and they actually manufacture this product and she developed it. So I will show it to you. I have a little one here in my little um, tin uh, that's got a magnet on the bottom so it's a little hard, but you don't want to lose these. It's very, very tiny and it's one of the coolest things that you'll ever see. So that being said, I want to come over to the machine and I want to show you I have a strip right now that I've actually done with the back side of the cover. Nick, can you see that from up close? And then you can see this is the back side. And I've already pulled these threads to the back. And I'm going to show you. This is the key thing I want to show you on the cover hem. This is the front of the cover hem. And because this is tie-dye, I use just a regular beige color on uh, probably all, I think I've got five different pajamas back here. This is a, um, a wonderful kind of a southwestern color look, real fun, a camouflage one. And then this is again like the sunset colors. So really, really fun colors. Um, this one is, oh, this one, that's a sunset, or this is a southwestern color. And they just blend. I mean, they're beautiful. You can wear all kinds of knit tops with them. They are the one of the most comfortable things that you will wear. You'll want to wear them outside and <laughs> go collect the garbage in the morning <laughs> and you don't feel like you have your pajamas on. Um, this is just a really beautiful one too. I wish you could feel them because they are the softest fabric. I believe uh, we've shown them in some of our other events. In fact, Nick, I do have, this is the Southwestern one. Um, it's just beautiful when you see all the the colors on it. I mean, just really fun. And of course you could use this with knit shirts or um, this one is a real surprise. Um, this has got, if you look at it from the back, maybe I'll turn it this way. Do you see what's blended in there? Stars. <laughs> so it's really kind of fun. It would be a real great one again for, uh, um, you know, putting some other shades of colors with it for a t-shirt. Now the, um, the key that I wanted to show you is how to do this cover hem. So, and what to do with the ends, because I think anyone that I've talked to about a cover hem always gets 
Ooh, what am I going to do? Cover him? That's really hard to do. It's not hard at all. Um, when you start, and especially on a machine like this, I'm going to put this folded side and like this is your rough side in the side. And I'm going to start up here because I want to show you how to put those, those threads to the other side. I have a knee lift lever here that I could put with my knee. But watch when I go ahead and I step on it and I put my threads to the back when I'm sewing. And you can see that this is a really fairly quiet machine. But this is where I want to show you. Now, I've got this machine set with the needle down in the fabric. I want to be able to, I could bring that up by touching the needle or I can just bring my hand wheel up, which I'm going to do just to make sure it's in the, the highest level. Now this is when you want to take the threads out of your cover hem. Raise your presser foot. Now watch carefully what I'm going to do. I'll do it a second time so if you don't catch it the first. I'm going to put my finger here and I'm going to pull it out to the back. And then I'm going to take my scissor and you see these two threads that are in the front? You see those? I'm going to cut those first because I want you to see this. And then I'm going to pull it again cut it, and what it did, it, it pulled, can I show them here? It pulled all those threads right to the back, right away. So now, and why is that important? Because now I'm gonna take those threads and I'm gonna tie them. And I have this wonderful little tool that helps with tying a knot if you have fat fingers. <laughs> you can see I'm going and tying it. And give it about two or three little twists with your scissor. I mean with your um, knot. Then I'm going to take this little hooky tool and this is the greatest. Oh, I just can't even tell you. I, we got to get these back in, John and Feather. We really need them <laughs> soon. Now I'm not going to make it too long. I'm going to cut a little of it off. There, if you look at this closely, maybe yeah, you are over there, yeah. here. Okay. Do you see how there's a little hook right in the end here? See that little hook there? If you can see that real, real easy. That's what I want to hold the threads with. And I am literally going to go in here, and I'll let me pull these out so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to pull um, these thread. Oh, I've already pulled that one through here. Let me do it here. Uh, let's see, no, I want to do it on this piece. I've got so many pieces to show you that I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So now this little hook part, I'm going to take the whole portion of the hooky into the underside of the thread, and I'm going to hold this pretty tight on the corner, and look at how I'm just popping it right through. And then what it will do, now you could just leave it like this and cut off these ends so the, the rounded part is left in there too, or I'll do an, another one for you so you can see how I pull the threads out. See how you can see the threads now? But the key thing is that these threads are buried in the back of your seam. So they're not going to go anywhere. And then you could take and just clip the extra ones that are at the end. There's a little one in the front here. And that way you will never have that coming out in your seam. And in the back you can see it's on the front, it's perfect. Now you could take a little dab of fray check. If you've never used fray check before, you can see mine is pretty used up. I have about three bottles at home. You can take a pin and open the, the clip if you haven't been using it for a while. But I just put a little dab of where, the, um, where it started. Put that back on. And now I, have, I never have to worry about those threads coming out. And that's on the one side. Now, the other side, that was when we finished the, um, the um, cover hem. But what about when you are starting at the beginning? Remember, this is where we started with, and we still have two threads on this side and one thread on this side. So what I'm going to do, I like to use my little tweezers. It's just an easier one to go. And I'm just going to pull. You see, I've now pulled the other one to the other side, and then you take the other little loop on this tied, and now do you see how you have your three threads to the back? That is so key for you. So now look, your front is perfectly finished off here. That's the end of your seam. So you have a big, long, um, rounded seam like this. When you, you finished it off, we pulled them to the back. 
Now I do sew over the ends. I believe on this one you can, it's hard to see, but I do find, oh here you can, you can see it here a little bit better. I do at the end sew over the ends and then when I go to the back, I pull them through with a little hooky and I never have to worry about it. And then I will give it a little dab of the fray check because then that way I know that it's not going to ever come out. But these little threads at the uh, beginning, after I've gone, like this is a little circular um, piece. And, and by the way, when you're finished, you remember I pulled those threads out? Get rid of those extra threads. You don't want them there when you start again. So say that I'm going to go ahead <clears throat> and do another cover hem. And I start right here. And I go ahead and um, go across here. Now I'll wait until I've come all the way around here. Let's go. This is a long circular one, so it'll be a little bit harder for you to see it. But I wait until I come to this level, and now I can take my tweezer before I finish the hem, and I pull those little those little um, beads out. And do you see what I've done now? I've got all three threads pulled to the back. Then what do I do? I take that thread, and I love this little Bernina tool because it's great to make um, your knots with. It's just a real easy thing to do. Tie a couple of um, knots so that it gets nice and done, and then you take and, you know, cut the little extra threads, take your little hooky, and again, pull it through to the wrong side and embed it into the seam. And then your seam is perfectly finished at the start. So then when you come to the end, you're gonna do the same thing that I did. You're gonna pull it out. So let me do that again. I'll go right to the end. And how do I know that I'm gonna line this up? How do I line that up? Do you see these little um, teeth on the foot? They are perfect for sitting. I'm guiding them right over the edge of the um, seam that I did. Okay, so I'm ready to do it. I want to increase, I want to raise my needles to the highest height. I want to um, bring my presser foot up. And now what am I going to do? Were you watching on the other part? <laughs> okay, I'm going to pull it to the back. Oh my goodness, that looks awful, doesn't it? You could go ahead and cut all of them at one time if you want, but don't forget to pull these threads to the back because now, do you see how the threads are completely gone from the front and they're in the back and now I can tie these three threads together and pull them through to the back side with that little hooky. So I hope this gives you just a little bit of a clue on how easy it is to do um, working with your um, cover hems. Um, on this particular pair of pants I wanted to show you this because again it was, um, you can see back here I've already pulled through with the little hooky. This little, see I just went through here, pulled it through, and then I'm going to cut this thread like that, throw it away, and then you're going to, I even do still because this actually happens to be a waistband. And when you're doing a waistband, it's always, because you're going to be wearing that and using that a lot. So I do put a little dab of the uh, fray check on there. And I've tried all kinds of different, there's different brands. The Frey Check is really the one that will last the best and works the best. But you can see on when you, I use the one inch um, elastic. Now this one I haven't pulled yet, but I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take this through. I'm gonna hold it like here, cause you might see it a little better. Pull it through and it, you will have that embedded in the back too. So um, again, it's just a little tip but I hope it is something that will encourage you to use your cover hem. They are not hard. I think so many people are afraid of it because they think, what do I do with all these threads? And you pull out the extras. Remember when I'm through, there's extra here. And now you're set and ready to go and do another cover hem. I don't want you to forget about Melinda. She will be coming and really doing a wonderful, wonderful 
job on this extravaganza that we are having in October, but she will also be here in the spring doing surging. So, and we also have in November a wonderful Bernina Surging Academy. So look at our website, look at these wonderful events, try to sign up for them. And if you're far away, um, let us know. We'll try and do something for you too. Okay, thanks everyone. Hope to see you next week.